So we have the function f of x is equal to x to the sixth minus three x to the fifth. And we want to know over what intervals is f decreasing. And we're going to do it without even having to graph y equals f of x. And the way we do that is we look at the derivative of f with respect to x and think about, well, when is that less than zero? If, that, if the rate of change of f with respect to x is less than zero, well, over those intervals, it will be decreasing. So let's first take the derivative. So f prime of x is going to be equal to, just use the power rule here, it's going to be 6x to the fifth power minus 5 times 3 is 15x to the, let's decrease that exponent by 1, x to the fourth power. And so let's think about when this is going to be less than 0. Over what intervals is 6x to the fifth minus 15x to the fourth less than, less than 0? So let's see, we could factor out a 3x to the fourth. So 3x to the fourth times, see if we factor out a 3x to the fourth here, we'll just be left with a 2x minus 5 is less than 0. Did I do that right? Let's see, if I were to distribute it, 3 times 2 is 6, x to the fourth times x is x to the fifth. 3 times 5 is 15, and x to the fourth. Yep, that's right. So if I'm taking the product of two things, and I want it to be less than 0, well, there's only one way for that to happen, is that one, or I guess you could say there's two ways for that to happen. Either the first thing is positive and the second is negative, or the first is negative and the second is positive. And so let's do that. So either, either 3x to the fourth is negative and, and 2x minus five is positive, or, and let me just put the or in a, separate color here, or 3x to the fourth is positive, and 2x minus five is negative. So let's see, this is x to the fourth, 3x to the fourth being less than zero. Well, if we divide both sides by three, this is just gonna be x to the fourth needs to be less than zero. And is there any way for something to be to the, for, to the fourth power to be less than zero? Well, we're assuming we're dealing with real numbers here, and any real number to the fourth power is going to be greater than or equal to zero. So it's actually impossible for something to the fourth power to be less than zero. This thing is never, this thing is never going to be less than zero. So we can actually rule out this first case. So we can rule out that first case right over there. And so we're only going to worry about this case. So 3x to the fourth being greater than zero, well that's going to happen as long as x is not equal to zero. So this is, because for any other x, this is going to be true. x could be negative, you take it to the fourth power, multiply it by three, it's going to be greater than zero. So this is really just a condition that x cannot be equal to zero. And let's see, the second one, 2x minus five less than zero, that means 2x, is going to be less than five, and then x is less than five halves. So as long as x is less than five halves and x is not equal to zero, this thing will be decreasing. So if we wanted to write it in terms of, if we wanted to write it in terms of intervals, we could say x is, let me do this in a new color just to ease the monotony. So we could say that I'm having trouble picking a color. So we could say that x is less than zero, or zero is less than x is less than five halves. So x is less than zero, this is all the negative values, and then we're essentially just excluding zero and then going all the way to, all the way to five halves. And remember, I just, all I did is I said, well, when is our first derivative negative? Because if the first derivative is negative, then the rate of change of f with respect to x is negative, or f is decreasing as x is increasing.